and instruments. Further, the students carry out implant training at prestigious medical industry institutions located at various parts of India during the vacation period. Also, the department has with Indira Gandhi Centre for Atomic Research, Karpakam, and Boss and Private Limited Senai for R&D programs. The department has identified the following thrust areas of research and development. One is the bone density, medical thermography, and medical image and biosignal processing. I feel uh, proud of being say that the department has been blessed with having stalwarts of various biomedical um, multinational industries as our mission gives the corporate advisory board members. In our university, under the stream of engineering technology, there are 25 departments of different specializations. For administrative purposes, these departments are grouped under different schools. Each department offers wide range of B.Tech, M.Tech and PhD programs in the respective specialization. In the School of Bioengineering, there are six departments. Dr. M. Vayamani, Dean School of Bioengineering, who is the source of inspiration and support for department activities. Under his leadership, the School of Bioengineering has obtained many significant achievements. It gives me indeed great pleasure to welcome Dr. Yavai Yavai. Welcome, sir. Today is a good day because eminent radiologist managers from Siemens and Viproji Healthcare India Limited and entrepreneur and biomedical engineering faculty members are meeting today. I extend warm welcome to our guest speakers, Professor Dr. A. Uh, C. Saronan, Professor and Head, Department of Radiology Imaging, SRO Medical College, Mr. Nazab, Key Accounts Manager, Siemens Healthcare, Mr. Netra Raiza, Manager, Private Cluster, Siemens Healthcare, Mr. Uh, Doctor, Professor P. M. Vengatasoy, Professor and Head, Department of Radiology Imaging, Sri Ramachandra Medical University, Mr. Sundar Kalyana, General Manager, Vibro G. Healthcare, Mr. Sankar Das, Senior Clinical Specialist, Vibroji Hedkar, Mr. Nirajan Kumar, India Atlas One Limited. Also, I extend a warm welcome to all faculty members who have come from different engineering colleges and universities. Further, I welcome my colleague members and our student friends. I am sure that this faculty development program would throw light on latest developments in radiological equipments. Once again, I welcome one and all present here. Thank you, sir. With pleasure, I welcome Dr. N. Vayamani, Dean, School of Bioengineering, SRM University, to deliver the inaugural address. Experts, then Ramachandra, Medical College, like the 
we are not in uh, all the experts. But for the today's program is going to be very, very hectic and uh, you will hear uh, really from the experts. And uh, what exactly is really needed. As far as the faculty is concerned, uh, they will understand what is really happening. Uh, because the uh, biomedical engineering is a very wide discipline. I keep repeatedly telling that uh, anywhere it will fit in. Whether you name or any type of topic, uh, subject, you, know, you can bring in it. Biotechnology or bioinformatics or genetic engineering. Name it, instrumentation. Anywhere it fits in. The only thing is you need to add you know, bio in the input of it, biomechanical, whatever it is. I was just going through the literature, what is the recent development, I think. Then uh, it looks like uh, it fits everywhere. Of course, the main reason is that you know, growing population and uh, you know, the, the increasing number of diseases. That's the main uh, thing which uh, refers to the demand of you know, all the biomedical engineers. And uh, you need to be updated and you need to be innovative and you need to come up with something new. And you all, as a bar now, see everywhere the medical uh, instrumentation is getting miniaturized and the diagnostic tools are being handheld and uh, so much and so much and uh, so many things happen actually and we have to agree on that we are really enjoying the life expectancy is uh, almost like double in the last uh, like four decades and uh, therefore there is a huge demand for innovation and everywhere you know you can always uh, apply in fact uh, every new job student or the faculty, how do they can device, make their own device at home? The main thing is like, you know, it should be non-invasive. That's what people prefer, you know, without much efforts, you know, uh, diagnosis should be done. Very fast and also like, you know, you should not like, uh, it too expensive, that's another thing. And miniature is the main thing. Now you have all handheld, uh, like, uh, glucometers for just moving the diabetics so quickly. Every house must be active now, I think. They become so much uh, cheaper as well as physical. Now, imaging is one thing, which again, you know, but uh, as a rule like MRI imaging and the CAT and the, all the PET and the thing, uh, they made the diagnostic you know, more accurate and uh, more useful, I think. Because we are going to have it from the expert. I am not at all related to biomedical engineering, but you know, I can say, you know, like I am a mastectoscopist. Even the master community has had a role to play in imaging. Especially, you know, in the 2000, in the last 15 years actually, two techniques were introduced. Uh, one is called the electro spray initiation, another one is called the uh, matrix sensor laser result. Uh, these are the two techniques you know, which won the Nobel Prize in 2002 actually by Koichi Chanaka of Shimon's uh, Corporation and Dr. John Tan from USA. And these two people shared the Nobel Prize with the other gentleman. For developing these two techniques. These two de uh, techniques have uh, completely you know, revolutionized the use of mass spectrometry all over the world. And from the application point of view, uh, people again went from nature. In the uh, 80s, for example, a mass spectrometer used to occupy almost three fourths of this diagram. And it, it used to be very expensive and difficult to handle. But with this introduction of these two techniques, everything has become miniaturized. You can have bench top uh, instruments and uh, the application point of view people started thinking. Now even portable mass spectrometers are available. And one professor actually Graham Cook from Purdue University, he thought of miniaturizing the instrument and uh, he developed the technique called the uh, desorption electrostatic. This is called as uh, an abbreviated to DESA. And this technique you now he has developed a portable mass spectrometer which can be carried like maybe weighing around four or five pounds actually. The simple thing is, the electrospray initiation, what it does is, it, it sprays you know, solvent like methanol or water and uh, with the help of high voltage, you can spray the ions. Now, this is the one which uses uh, the ionization of the bigger molecules, the proteins, DNA and so on. Now, he developed this particular technique so that this spray can be directed on any surface, given at atmospheric pressure. And the water is, the secondary ions emitted, they can be sampled. This has got a huge application, especially the quarantine scale of the thing. And uh, this gentleman developed it as for even for like, analyzing like a tissue sample. How do you differentiate a cancer tissue sample from a normal tissue sample? He decided that uh, he just uh, focuses this ion beam on the tissue sample. And then whatever comes out, the ion which are going to be emitted, usually you know, they monitor the phospholipid which are available on the surface of the tissue. The phospholipid composition on the tissue of a cancer 
the tissue as the normal tissue is different. Now by placing this one, they could say that these tissues are you know, they are cancerous and these are non-cancerous. That is the development. And now even the same technique has been used for even analyzing the petri dish where you develop the bacteria growth and everything. They can directly use it, particular sampling technique, and then you can identify what the metabolites in the oxygen and that characterize the bacteria growth and everything. That much you know it is popular and it is much more simplified. And this is one story. And uh, the other story is the model, you know, the matter is the laser beam drop. That's another technique. It's completely used for imaging. <coughs> See, what we are aiming at is here now, any surface, if you can sample the ions which are emitted from the surface, that can be used for like, you know, imaging work. This modeling technique is also used for imaging, but only the unfortunately one thing is you need to put a matrix on this uh, tissue sample. Now, by doing that, it's possible to image and identify, the, 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 like, you know, diagnose the difference between normal tissue as well as the cancerous tissue. This is all very successful. But let the let, let us the development is, see, the modeling technique actually it takes, like, you know, you have to have 5,000 spectra per second you can have it. Now, that has to be processed. Now, another group of uh, scientists from Netherlands, what they have aiming is, they want to use mass spec, time of life mass instrument, as a microscope. Just is it possible to like, you know, use it as a microscope, mass microscope? Is it possible to flash it and get it, get the complete uh, uh, data? It requires a lot more like, you know, 512 by 512 uh, pixels, you, know, you need to sample it. And then they are able to achieve that. For that, you know, they have developed the new detector, like which is, they call it as a time pix, they call it. Uh, this is a, like,